Chapter 2 Jack Jack paused at the door to the classroom, a nearly full bottle of whiskey dangling from his left hand, dried blood leaving a crust on his palm. The classroom was nearly empty. Rose stood with her hands on her hips as she glared at the banner. Wet paint glistened in the afternoon light coming through the window. He smiled as her lips puckered and one hand left her hip so her forefinger could tap against them, a slight frown forming between her brows. It has to be perfect. Arthur reached out to brush his hand across her hair where it fell in long blonde locks down her back. It is. The Queen will love it. She won't notice any other banner. Rage filled Jack and he reached for the gun in the waistband of his jeans, hidden by his leather jacket. The first of March might be a warm day, but these days he didn't go anywhere without his jacket. He didn't care what people said. No one had the right to tell him how to dress. As he stepped into the classroom, the other occupant reached out a hand to slip it around Rose's waist. It's perfect, Rose. Kay tilted her head to bump it against Rose's shoulder momentarily and brown locks mingled with blonde. You're a natural artist. We wouldn't expect anything else. It had been what had first brought him and Rose together. Their art. He stepped further into the room and when they turned to see who entered, he spoke. I want to talk to you, Rose. Get rid of them. He waved the gun towards each side of her. Kay screeched, both hands covering her mouth. Her blue eyes were so wide the whites were unnaturally noticeable. Now listen here. Arthur stepped forward to shield the two girls. Shut your mouth. Another word from you and I'll shut it permanently. Jack turned his glare from Arthur to Kay when she gave another screech. And that goes for you too. He had a swig from his bottle, his mouth dry. What was he doing here? He couldn't remember what thought process had brought him to this classroom. Then his gaze returned to Arthur and anger rushed through him. Jack! Rose stepped forward and away from her companions. Why don't you put that bottle down and hand me the gun? It's your birthday. It's not every day your birthday falls on a Friday. Her lips curved into a smile but it didn't reach her eyes. She held out a hand. Please Jack. You're always going on about how much I drink. Jack had another mouthful. He needed a cigarette, but they were tucked into the sleeve of his t-shirt, and his hands were already full. If he put the bottle down, Rose would think it was because she'd asked. He frowned. Why had he come? It took a moment. His birthday. You said we'd go out together on my birthday. He gestured towards Arthur with the gun. Before he stole you. We could still go somewhere. Tonight. There's all sorts of celebrations this weekend. Everyone's excited to have Queen Elizabeth coming to Brisbane. Rose took a hesitant step forward, her tone soothing. She let her hand drop to her side. Enough. I don't want to hear another word about the blasted queen. A movement behind Rose drew his attention, and he saw Arthur throw himself forward. There was confusion as the sound of the gun rang out. Kay screamed and fainted. Blood blossomed on Arthur's shoulder as he slumped to the ground. No. Rose threw herself at Arthur, pressing her hand against the flowing blood, sobs breaking free as she called his name. His eyes fluttered. Rose. Then he went limp. Arthur. Oh, Arthur. One hand went to his heart while the other was kept pressed against the wound. She turned her face up to Jack. Please. You must call for an ambulance. Please. Jack shook his head, the gun held at his side, pointed at the floor. It was his own fault. He shouldn't have rushed me. This wasn't a game of footy. Jack. Please. No. You can't do this. 
Every time someone says the name Elizabeth, you lose your temper. It's been more than a year. You have to let her go. Rose continued to hold her hand against Arthur's shoulder. Please, Jack. He shook his head. Leave him be, Rose. You're mine. You told me you'd always be mine. That was before you started drinking and smoking and hanging out with the wrong people. And that motorcycle. You can't expect a lady to ride on a motorcycle. Leave him be, Rose. He reached out and grabbed her arm, dragging her to her feet. Leave him be. Rose stared up at him, her gaze colliding with his, her voice whisper soft. Please. Let me go. Jack shook his head. I can't. Not you two. I just can't. I'm sorry. She relaxed against him, one arm going around his waist, the other creeping inside his jacket. Rose? Her body felt so familiar against his. It had been months since he'd held her like this. The bottle dropped from his hand and his arms went around her, the side of the gun pressed against the small of her back. Rose? The word was a sigh as he closed his eyes, resting his chin against the top of her head. He felt her hand move further inside his jacket. I did love you. I thought we'd be together forever. The sound of a pocket knife snapping open made him pull back to stare down at his own blade pressed against his chest. Rose? You scare me. Her hand trembled. You won't stop following me. And now Arthur. She glanced over her shoulder to where he lay, blood spreading around him. Further over, Kay was still unconscious on the floor. You have to let me go. Please? Just let me go. Walk away. Jack shook his head. No. We're going. No. Just the two of us. We're going to find somewhere no one can take you from me. No. Rose struggled wildly as Jack tried to drag her from the classroom. Her struggles drove the knife into flesh and the gun fired again. Her mouth opened wide as her eyes were drawn to the knife. Then her gaze slowly rose to meet Jack's, her mouth still open. The gun fell to the ground and Jack reached for Rose, his eyes drawn to the blood soaking through the material of her dress, staining her middle. Rose? He reached out a hand and staggered, looking down at the knife that protruded from him. He frowned, not feeling anything. His knees buckled and collided with the ground as Rose dropped with him, her hands pressed against her stomach as she tried to rise. I love you. His words were filled with confusion. I'm scared. He tried to reach out to her. Comfort her. Promise he'd be there. No words came as he crashed to the ground, his head connecting with the floorboards. He could see the edge of Rose's dress, blood reaching the hem to pull on the wooden floorboards where she knelt. Behind her Arthur stretched out. His vision blurred and he saw his mother bending towards him. Going to her knees as she reached for him, tears streaking her face. Forgive me. He spoke to his mother but Rose answered instead. Never. The sound of her body hitting the floor filled the room. He tried to call out to Rose, but words again failed him. Behind his mother, he saw a winged man. He stood tall, a comforting hand resting on his mother's shoulder as she sobbed. Elizabeth. Let him go. The words were firm, but compassionate. He's my baby. There must be something I can do. The angel shook his head. He chose his own path. He lost his way and couldn't find the path. Elizabeth caressed Jack's cheek. You heard him. She turned her head to the angel, her hand still on Jack. At the end. You heard my son. He asked for forgiveness. He repented at the end. You must give him a chance. The angel stared down at Elizabeth. 
Jack watched them both, the sound of his fading heartbeat filling his ears with its last desperate beats. He nearly missed the angel's reply over the noise. The usual plea of the damned. He nodded sharply. He'll have his chance. For seven times seven years he shall be bound to this place forced to see and hear, but never be seen or heard. To never touch or feel, to be unforgiven by all who remember him. Then he shall have his chance to redeem himself. Thank you. You'll see. He won't disappoint me. I have complete faith he'll do all in his power to redeem himself. But what you said isn't true. I forgive him. Like my love he has it without asking. He's my son. Both are unconditional. The angel gave another short nod, then reached out his hand to her. Please. Let me stay with him to the end. The angel continued to hold out his hand. It is the end, Elizabeth. It's time to say goodbye. Jack's eyes closed and he felt his mother's lips press against his forehead. He wanted to say something. Anything. No words came. Elizabeth's hand cupped his cheek. I know, baby. I love you too. I'll be waiting for you. Her lips pressed against his forehead again. No matter how long it takes. I'll be waiting for you.